so uh, I think we're ready for the next session. Uh, I would like to introduce you, Jan, because it's one of the sessions that we quickly accepted because it goes in the right direction of using APIs and not trying to hack things that you shouldn't be changing because you really have to focus on the APIs. But he will tell you more about it. And um, so please welcome Jan. So uh, yeah, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Jan Vonker, and as you can see, I'm talking about our frescoes uh, APIs or the REST API of the future that we put on the uh, title for the session. But hopefully you'll see that a lot of this is closer than you think. So I'd like to talk a little bit about future future as well at the end. And it's only 20 minutes and I'd like to do a quick demo as well. So there's a lot for me to fit in. If I miss anything or if I start talking too fast, please find me later on. And um, I think we've also got a session tomorrow in the first break around birds of a feather, around the app dev framework and potentially APIs. So if you're interested in that, come tomorrow in the first break and we can talk more then as well. Um, I've just threw on this slide. I don't know if you probably can't see it from the back, but all, all the slides will be available anyway. But it says basically how to create a stable API. There's a map. There's a parameter here. There's a map object object and with the name parameter name FFU. And the guy at the bottom says for future use. So I came across that. So I thought I'd throw that into the slides. Um, as I say, my name is Jan Vonker. I've been working at Alfresco many years, um, primarily on the repository and the platform as a whole, working from the bottom, the persistence layer and the storage infrastructure upwards. Uh, the, right now, I'm in a team that's working on the kind of public facing API, so looking at it more from a top down perspective. And at some point, I've probably touched on various layers and components in between. So, just a very quick summary um, of what we're going to talk about. I'm going to do a quick introduction. I'll talk about the present. I've, uh, in, in some slides, uh, to, so I think there's a Tech Talk Live that uh, Gavin Cornwell did with Ol. They talk about the past as well, so I've skipped that because we haven't got so much time. So talk about a little bit about the present and then hopefully talk about where we're moving forward in the near term and f the future. And as I said, I'd like to get a quick demo in. And if there's time for feedback and questions, then that'd be great. Otherwise, catch me later on. As you see, I found a few pictures of bee, bee balloons. I, I fly a hot air balloon, so I like balloons. So there's a few balloons in the in the slides as well uh, yeah this is the standard disclaimer that everything I say who knows if it will be there but actually the important thing is that we'd like to collaborate with everybody around the new features and new APIs so although things are subject to change uh, that's partly hopefully with with you guys we can do that so as a quick introduction uh, I won't I mean I think I don't need to convince you guys but APIs and platforms are literally everywhere um, so I'll whiz through these slides these uh, points here but basically those APIs and the, and the services enable a developer ecosystem. They're typically the main entry point for anything as a service, X as a service, you know, software as a service, you know, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Uh, obviously we build apps, both web-based, mobile, native mobile, um, against those APIs and often provide an integration mechanism um, to other applications and services. And we also use the APIs to provide add-ons into our own apps. Uh, and nowadays, pretty much everything has an API from a light bulb to smart TV to cars, etc. So uh, the next couple of slides I've borrowed from one of my colleagues, uh, Gavin Cornwell. It's a sort of a poster infographic. So you won't probably be able to read this from the back. But when you can get hold of the slides, you can have a look. Um, and I've just split it across two slides. And he put this together earlier in the year. Um, and it's really around uh, the API usage is exploding and standardizing. Um, and I'll let you have a look at that later on. And that what we're trying to do is make the APIs a lot more consistent um, as we move forward via guidelines and a kind of a framework and a pattern. Uh, there's some stuff about the URL here, but I will actually touch on that a little bit later on. Um, and as we move forward, we'd like the API to be effectively contract first design. So it's something we can collaborate on both internally and externally. Um, and so hopefully we can collaborate on the definition rather than the code implementation. In the past, if you looked at the V0 web scripts, you, the, the documentation is pretty much non-existent. You'd have to reverse engineer those web scripts. Even the descriptors really didn't have any, any information. You'd have to reverse engineer the code to really understand how it was working. So hopefully here with the specifications up front, we can do contract first design. And obviously APIs also provide uh, a sort of a cloud compatible extension model, which is really talking about um, having the ability to have out of process extensions where you could hook in uh, both inbound and outbound, so we'll touch on that a little bit later on. So those, you can have a look at those when, I, when we get the slides uploaded. Um, I borrowed this slide, so we're talking about the present. I borrowed this slide from the documentation. Here's a quick uh, slide of the current architecture, and a lot of this is evolving. 
The platform is the kind of blue purple bit at the bottom and just hit in the middle there is the kind of API layer and on the top is the sort of client examples around sort of surf share um, and other integrations so again something you can reference later if you haven't already seen that in the documentation um, in terms of the present in terms of 4.2505.1 you're probably most of you are maybe aware of this we have a public API that's built on a framework that extends the web script engine um, we use an internal set of guidelines um, uh, and those provide the URLs and, and requests and responses and parameters and query options that are kind of consistent However, until now, and they, it's both on-premise and cloud, but until now, really, you'd use that in conjunction with CMIS. Um, and there's a couple of URLs that example the two end, kind of top-level endpoints. Um, for 5.1, we've, we've completely revamped the developer documentation. So if you look at the 5.1 documentation, kind of the introduction, there's a lot more there in terms of guiding you, which is great. Um, we also introduced very recently, uh, and I'll touch on this a little bit further in the slides, uh, an API explorer, which uses the open API open API specification for the existing REST APIs. But I'd like to do in, in terms of, and that's really around, and you'll see this in a minute, around sites, uh, listing sites and favorites and things that you couldn't easily do through CMIS. Um, and also as part of 5.1, we've deprecated the V0 endpoints, which were the kind of original web scripts that provided certain level of interaction. So, and those are the ones that aren't very well documented and aren't particularly consistent. Some come back in XML, some come back in JSON, et cetera. So that, that, those are kind of changes of the present for five to up to 5.1. Uh, I put this slide in, I think Ole or somebody asked me to put this slide in, but this kind of again about the URL in terms of the current REST API. If you ignore all the sort of beginning part, which you can look up and is documented, we're kind of looking at the sort of last part. Uh, the API is structured around collections, uh, entities. In terms of the current API, there's things like listing sites and managing site memberships. And those entities have an ID, for example, and typically have a relationship to other things, in this case, memberships. And then you can actually go further down. You could have another uh, relationship, entity relationship, in some cases, going further down. Uh, we have, these are the examples of the current 5.1 public API, people and the activity stream for a person, a person's favorites in terms of sites or nodes, uh, commenting on nodes and ratings. So this, it's fairly limited what you can do, but you, you'd use that in conjunction with CMIS if, if you're currently building against 5.1 or drop down to the V0 APIs, which as we say, we're deprecating and potentially will remove at some point in the future. Um, so again, that's the present. Uh, I put this, uh, this is a little bit of a summary slide, a little bit like, I noticed this looks a little bit like John's, although his was a bit more colorful this morning. Um, it's just again, a reminder of the kind of high level box architecture, ECM there is a, on the left and BPM on the right, the sort of public REST APIs as we move forward across the two. Uh, and in terms of the client side, options to have client side SDKs and an app dev framework. I think you'll be hearing more about that later today and tomorrow. Uh, and you can see there's some other share and iCal and applications, both web-based, mobile and desktop. Initially desktop sync, but you could imagine other features appearing in the desktop client. And very importantly, you know, third party applications and integrations. So in terms of the REST API moving forward, um, the key thing for us is that we want to make it easier to consume, make sure it's logical, consistent, fully documented, um, very easy to get started for new developers. We're extending and improving the existing REST framework to enable that and the patterns we have um, in a backwards compatible way, so that's actually mentioned at the bottom. Um, so in terms of simple and smart, yeah, I mentioned easy to consume, but we'd also like to make sure, especially with the audience today, that there are advanced options in there as well. So not only for new developers, but for people that are experienced with Alfresco, hopefully there's things in there that would actually interest you. And as I put in a, a panther or a tiger jumping through a flaming hoop, it, hopefully it's become a lot, more, a lot easier to get going and actually um, use the APIs. Uh, so also added benefits will hopefully be they're, they're a little bit more lighter weight, more performant. Uh, the way we, re for example, re re bring back responses will be uh, more minimal based, but with the option to extend those responses to include and expand things, or in some cases, restrict them even further. Um, and I, I can't really get into too many details in 20 minutes. You might see a touch on that as we go through a demo. Uh, in terms, I mentioned API contract, uh, API first. We're now using uh, the open API specification, which used to be uh, sort of came from Swagger. Um, and that's available on GitHub now. I think that's a public, yes. Uh, uh, and so in terms of the V1 REST API, we're actually adding a lot of major incremental uh, features 
but it'd still be backwards compatible with the existing uh, entities that I mentioned earlier. The API Explorer is something, this, this URL is live, and I've got some references at the end of the slides as well. This one at the moment um, drops you into the 5.1 APIs that I mentioned. But in terms of the GitHub project, if you look at the develop branch, you'll actually see some of the, uh, the new APIs that are coming very soon. Um, you can try, uh, the API Explorer is live, so you can actually put data and you can actually use the API against the live server. I think the DevOps team may uh, tear that data down every, it's dummy data you should put in there. It may go every week or you know, every day, every week, every month. I'm not sure the exact decision. But you can actually try the, it's an interactive explorer. So not only is it documented, you can actually, has like effectively a try it out button. Um, I haven't really got time to demo that. It's very easy to get going. So if you look at that URL, you'll see it. And you can use your favorite REST client or HTTP client. Um, I'll be doing a quick demo in Postman. It's just as easy to use curl or any other, any other client. Hopefully for you to be able to use those APIs coming soon, but there's a couple of options. We're not still discussing how to do that, but options might be we're merging to head, so you can maybe get it through nightly builds. I think there's discussions around the next community early access release, possibly even Docker images, um, some options that we're looking at. And here's an example, and you can't read this, but if you look at the slides later, there's a whole list of things that's coming very soon in terms of node management, uploading files, downloading files, moving, copying, deleting. Um, site management, uh, shared links, public shared links, etc. So I'll demo a little bit of that as well, but have a look at that when you get a chance afterwards. And here's another slice of it um, in terms of nodes, uh, managing files, managing folders, managing custom nodes, uh, the renditions around the content, the trash can and deleted nodes, search and live search, um, public shared links, and then a few things we're looking at more to the future. Um, so I won't go through all these points, um, but I'll give you a flavor. And I'm going to touch on some of the right-hand side at, at the end of the presentation. So in terms of quick demo, and I'll see if I can do this with the short time we have. Oh, do I? Oh, no. Somebody said it would be easy to drag it on. Is that? You probably can't see that very well, but um, oh, no, I can't see it. I knew this would happen. And let me just, uh, can you see that? Yeah. Um, this is Postman. Imagine you can use curl as well. So, it's, and basically, um, I can also, if I just do this, I just have to restart the slideshow. This is share. And share, this is um, test user, it's empty. Oh, login. So just to give you a flavor, here I've got a listing. This is basically a list, the URLs, this is Postman, so there's a few things that are cut down in terms of the URL, but there's a base URL, which is the long part. Here's just basically listing the sites. If I just, you see a list of sites, here's the included the demo sample sites. There's just one site. I've now got an API here where I can create a site. It's called Hello World 123, a private site. If I send that, I've now created a site, which is actually share compatible, which is something you couldn't do very easily before. <laughs> so there's a listing the sites you now see there's two sites and um, there's a there's an existing api call that gets you the document library so it gives you a reference now the way it's working through postman there's a little bit of a script at the end that pulls out the id from the previous call which is how i can just click through this so in this case the doclib id here is going into the next call so if i now actually i can create a folder and in fact, with this folder, it's called hot air for hot air balloons. Actually, the folder has a path. It's going to actually do like a make directory. I'll create a little path here in a call. So that's going to create a folder hierarchy. I'm going to upload a piece of content. I'm just doing this through Carl, but you can, uh, through Postman, but you can imagine this through Carl. You just cut and paste the IDs across, or you can just build your own client. I'm going to choose a file here to upload. Oops. Uh, send that. That's uploaded the file. I could get the content now to show you, but what I'll do rather than that is I'll also create a shared link, which is a public shared link. So that's using the ID of that file that I just uploaded. This is Postman. This does a replacement of the ID coming back. So if I just create a public shared link, which has, uh, you probably can't see it on the screen very well, but it has one of the short UIDs, short link. Uh, here, there's a, there's a short code here. And for the last one here is this is a this one has no authentication, so this is effectively like a quick share link. If I download the content, you can see that was uploaded. So there's a bunch of calls that are made very quickly uh, through Postman. And if I switch over to share here, if I reload this here, 
there's the site that I created. In fact, we also put on a favorite by default. You can switch off the favorite if you don't want. There's, there's a, call, a part of the query params. You cannot create the favorite, but typically in share, it's the site you create is favorited. If I go into the document library, you can see the activity stream. I also created a rendition at the same time. Go down that hierarchy of folders that was created. And there's the um, balloon. You can see the quick share link. You might have seen the quick share link highlighted up there. So there's a few calls there available in share as well. So very rapid demo, and I'm not sure how we're doing for time, because I've lost my clock. Five minutes, perfect. Let me just, uh, is that still on the same slide? Yes, good, perfect. Um, so I, I realize I'm whizzing through this very quickly, but some of those things I mentioned in terms of the API, in terms of files, folders, um, upload, download, previewing the renditions, live search. Here's a screenshot of uh, a file sharing app that's been built in-house that I think you'll be hearing more about as we move forward. Uh, and that's using all of these new APIs. Um, and there's a screenshot. You can also create shared links. You can do moves, copies. You can delete and undo from the trash can. So all those things I showed just now are running in the uh, file sharing app there. So in terms of future ideas moving further forward, you know, we'd like the, the API to be agile, which is a little bit of an oxymoron, because it's hard with an API as we develop it and as people start using it in anger, we really can't change it. So what we do want to do is get the new improved APIs and services out as quickly as possible in conjunction with you know, the developer community. But there is a life cycle, and you know, in some cases, probably we need a period of early access, which will allow us to tweak the API with hopefully your feedback. Um, obviously, when it goes generally available in terms of either community release or enterprise, Effectively, by definition, it becomes backwards compatible. We want to maintain that so people can trust us moving forward. And that's the important thing, is that we want those upgrades to be smart and reliable. So really, in terms of the URL structure, we won't really bump up the V1 number uh, for quite some time, hopefully. The only reason we would change to kind of a V2 uh, API set would be if we completely changed the core pattern and we wanted to reinvent the API, and then we would still have the V1 API available. So all the changes I'm talking about are incremental updates. Uh, we want to expose, as I mentioned, more platform services, both existing services and new ones, and have more parity with anything in V0 that you guys might be using already. And look at things like batch operation. I think this will be critical in terms of, uh, well, providing hopefully async, but also potentially the option to be transactional as well. With the transactional, it comes the cost that if you're doing very large operations at some point, it's too big and you may time out, so we'll probably put an optional timeout on that. Um, but otherwise, async operations. And the key one, I think, is the uh, event notifications or pushback, callbacks. We need a way, particularly as we move towards uh, ECM as a service, is a way for uh, additional external rules and policies to be fired based on effectively subscriptions to policy behaviors that you would normally do with custom behaviors. So that's something we're seriously looking at as we move forward. And in terms of what else, hopefully, is driven by your scenarios and solution requirements. Uh, I think I've got a third slide here. Uh, it's client SDKs, that's uh, another thing. And there's an example here. I know uh, this is not so much, this is for activity rather than our Fresco side of things, but the, the two will hopefully come together. He's got an example of a Java-based SD, client SDK that's also, he's using for Android. This is Jean-Marie. And I think that's available publicly on GitHub as an example, as a, I guess, a proof of concept. Um, and I think, as I mentioned, we'll be talking more about uh, AppDev framework. Um, I think John mentioned that this morning. So. I think it's allowed to be mentioned on this slide. And I think there's the birds of the feather tomorrow, uh, first break. So that you can imagine that, for example, being a JavaScript side, client side SDK. Thank you. So I've thrown in a few links in case when you get hold of the slides, you can, in terms of documentation, the API Explorer. Um, I didn't actually demo the API Explorer, but you can, you'll see it's a swagger style. Uh, you can explore all the details we've documented um, uh, and unit tested pretty much every combination you can think of in terms of using those APIs. Uh, as I mentioned, the API, the actual specification itself that the API Explorer is built from is on GitHub, uh, both for the current 5.1 master, but also there's a developed branch. So the things I've just been showing you, you can actually see the specification. And you can either run up a new X API Explorer, or you can cut and paste that. If you can't read the spec, you can cut and paste it into Swagger Hub, and you'll see it as an interactive, although you won't have a back end for it, you'll see the same kind of uh, documentation. There's a Tech Talk Live that was about a month ago or so, a month and a half, with um, Ole and Gavin. So I'd recommend having a look at that. That covers some of the things I've been talking about as well. And yeah, and 
thanks very much for your time. Sorry to whiz through it so fast, but that's the time I had. Um, so we really welcome your feedback. And if you've got any questions now, that's great. Or otherwise, later on, come and find me. Or um, tomorrow, we're talking about, hopefully, the Birds of the Feather session. Boris. Is there any support uh, already, or there will be support for the kind of protocol? I, I don't remember the, the name of it. When you send a um, REST query, and you get immediately a response with a link where you're going to find the answer when it's resolved. So instead of waiting to process the whole query, it's then at the end. Well, right. That's an option. You mean, a, you mean an, I, async, async. an async, but there's a number of patterns to the async. So there's obviously the basic async will be, I think, the way you described it. We'd get back an ID, and then you can pull back at your own leisure at, as well. Now, that is definitely an option, and I think in many cases that's a perfectly reasonable way of doing it. And I think that is an option we probably need to consider, especially if some, in some cases our clients may not wish to have out external callbacks, uh, although that will be the other thing in terms of webhooks. You can actually register, would be another way, would be to register callback, but obviously we'd have to make a call out, or otherwise you need reverse. So I think having that option would be important, especially if you don't have callbacks. Uh, but otherwise the server-side events would be the other thing that we should consider, which I think are affected on the same call that you've made, if that's what you're referring to. Yeah. So that's the other option, server-side events. Yeah, okay. No, but uh, uh, but the, the, the decision of whether to invest time in those kind of things depends on whether people is requesting for them. Yes, or, yeah. yeah, definitely. We'll have some ideas internally, but we'd like to actually, it's, it's much more important if we can get your feedback, yeah, yeah. on which areas to invest. Are there any other? Yes, I missed that talk. So the uh, questions about uh, the person was in the talk around separating sharing platform. This sounds like a very similar idea. Yes, it's part of that. It's it's the fact you can build your own applications against the platform directly. In some cases, you may wish to leverage on top of, as you do now with Share and iCow, or in terms of moving forward, uh, an app development framework, you may wish to extend applications that we provide. Um, but people already do that. People already build custom applications against Alfresco. But in the past, a lot of people would have to spend a lot of time reverse engineering the existing calls to try and figure out. And a lot of the APIs were not really marked in terms of public or private. It wasn't clear how long we would support them for. Many of them we marked as private because we weren't sure either. So this is a very much a statement that when we've marked it as public, beyond early access, or once you know, for early access, we may wish to tweak it slightly. We, you know, it becomes part of the V1 uh, API moving forward. Um, No, the JSON response as well. Yeah. So, yeah, the documentation. I think the first link I had um, is uh, the actual documentation website, which is kind of a high-level summary of various options. But somewhere I think near the top, you can drill down into the REST API Explorer, and that takes you off to a separate, uh, effectively a separate service. And that is the sw Swagger document or the Open API specification that has. You can try it out. So it's, it's requests and responses. Um, so, for example, we have some people experimenting with generating their own client-side SDK skeleton from that documentation directly. And there's a debate as to whether you can completely generate and only have it generated moving forward in terms of updates. But in, in terms of providing a skeleton client-side SDK, you can actually generate against, the document against that specification. So the open API specification is in a YAML format. I think we're also generating into a JSON format, which is kind of equivalent. And yeah, it has the responses. There are some subtleties. There are a few things we're working on uh, where the open API spec and the swagger definition doesn't can't cover all combinations so there are a few subtleties where uh, you it's not totally 100% one for one which is why you probably can't fully generate the SDK and that's kind of a limitation of the specification rather than what you can do in terms of how different option formats that come back so in a good example here would be I showed you when you upload content you can upload the content using multi-part form data and we post the collect we post the new node to a collection. We also give you the option to post JSON to the collection. So there's two, we could, the API allows consumption of two types of um, uh, request. One is JSON and one is multi parts. Open API specification struggles a little bit with, and there's a few other subtleties like that. But pretty much, 
I think 95%, yes, the responses are documented. Um, obviously, and then you can also try it out very easily, so you can also get them back. But the important thing with the responses, and it's something to look, I mentioned briefly on one of the earlier slides, is we have, we're trying to return back a minimal response that makes sense. So Google, for example, do this. Their version three of Drive is much smaller, and you include optionally new things. But the thing is, you have to document those. You have to know they exist. So you can extend the response the way you wish and actually restrict it. But we also document all the optional things that you can just include in. An example would be path for folder. You want to see the path that where the node belongs. You can optionally look that up, and that's documented. But it won't come back unless you ask for it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.